you need to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV, episode 89. How are you? Scott Johansson, my lovely co-host. Great. You? Oh, great. What's new? Anything exciting? And new printer. Oh, yeah, so did I. Uh, my dog ran away today. Some idiot came over and let my dog run out. That person would be you, since you weren't holding on to your dog. Wait, you're calling me an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> oh was it you i didn't remember you know you could train the dog to stop and sit come back none of that works huh the beagle okay excuse is what that sounds like the beagle anyway what's new in model kit land for you anything see any movies see any cool shows buy anything Cool stuff come in the mail. We'll talk about news and reviews. Got anything? We have a not a lot no, for this I episode. We do have a Hulk uh, coming from our guest today. And who is our guest? Let's everybody know right off the bat. Our guest is Troy McDevitt. Troy sculptor, McDevitt. Uh, extraordinaire. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite. I, I, I like Troy's style. Um, I was going to say, he fits right into what you like a lot. Sort of a does. stylized comic, like, like and, uh, cool little things, so. You know, I've just, I've always liked Troy, you know, just, I always like Troy and, uh, does he like you? That's, I don't think, no I don't one know. likes me. Okay. Um, so he was, he was talking his Hulk bus the other day and there was one I still wanted and I got a hold of him and I said, Hey, uh, you still make this one? He says, yeah. So, uh, send him some money. And then I said, uh, Hey, would you be interested in coming on our podcast? And, uh, he said, sure. Uh, once again, I lined up the talent, and uh, here we are. Here we are. Did the person that we wanted to come on a couple weeks ago, did they ever call, get back to you? Of course not. Oh, man. got to get on his ass. Uh, well, that's, that's you, I, you just swore in the first seven minutes, but okay. <laughs> Was there a seven-minute rule I can't Yes, swear there to... is. <laughs> uh, anyway. Technically, so, ass isn't a swear word. Technically, you're right. Technically. So I don't know if they'd flag us for ass. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> I'll leave it. Um, as far as everything new, stuff, stuff, remember, please like, subscribe. Uh, we are, are about, I think we just hit 1,290. So that's more than I, again, ever thought. So keep on subscribing. A lot of people, please hit the like button. I know it's hard, but it helps. A little bit helps. You don't and, have to like to like. No, you don't. Just even if you hate, hate like us. I, that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, it's been just I've been kind of blah since the last episode, but I'm working on some stuff. We'll talk about that in workbench. Not a lot of updates, but some things to talk about. But uh, we do have a giveaway, but it'll be at the end of news and reviews. It's gonna be kind of worked into there. So, want to jump right into news and reviews? Or you got something else up front? No. Oh. No? Let's go. Say your words. Say your sound effects. All right. What do we have here, Mr. Johansson? Oh, sorry. Oops. I hit the wrong button. Of course you did. My window. There we go. What do we have here? We have, do you know who this is? It's Mr. Magoo. It's Mr. Magoo. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is really cool. This is, uh, of course, by Well Winner. And uh, just came out. And uh, first of all, I got to say his renders are amazing. But They are. Uh, you know, and this looks like a nice, small, little, compact, easy to print piece. Um, I think it's perfect in in that in that style. Just a small, yeah. little, very vertical. Oh, I love it. So, um, oh my god, you've done it again. Um, Here's the part breakdown. Got that. 
part breakdown. Like I said, there's nothing in there that's hard to print. And um, yeah, it, it's fantastic. Well is on a roll. And up next from Well is? Now, do you know who this is? I think it was Dr. Zero. Yeah, I don't. Ghost I villain, don't know what it's no? from. I don't. Okay. But um, so he's got this one out Oops. as well. As well. And I, I jumped ahead real quick. And I know you know this one. I love this one. Dungeon Master and I Uni. Knew you were like this one. Dungeon so Master ahead. and Uni. I was waiting for this. Uni should be with the Barbarian, but his pose, I, I get why this is like this. But I love this. Love it. <laughs> I love Dungeon Master. From the Man, D&D I, cartoon. So Are you getting that whole diorama? Oh, I got it, because I'm on the Patreon, so I have all of it oh, okay. already. All right. Oh, I love it. Next up. And, um... Natty say, Ramos? Is that, I'm Natty guessing, Ramos? Ramos? Natty Ramos? Uh, I don't know. But anyway, he's done some really nice stuff. Uh, some stuff that I really like. These Daffy Ducks. I printed the one on the right. I don't have the other two. Um, if you're interested in this stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip it off right here. Okay. <laughs> he accepts a lot of best offers. Okay. So, um... Don't be afraid to just make an offer. And uh, he accepts. So this I this is going to go right along with mm. the voicemail we got today that you have not okay. heard yet. So anyway, um, I love the one on the far right. I don't know why. And of course, I showed it to uh, our friend, Mr. Clark. Yeah. Who likes Daffy Duck. And I said, I suppose you're going to want all three of these. He goes, oh, yeah. And I go, well, that one <laughs> kind of reminds me of you. And... Uh, I don't know why he looks like he's yeah, I don't know. So I like all three of these. Um the next one. He's got two versions of the coyote there. And I like them both. And then he's got the Roadrunner sticking out the tongue. So um I like that. And I'm gonna tell you, he did something here with the Roadrunner. Maybe we should talk about this a little bit because we're gonna get to his next piece too. One thing about sculpting characters like this is resin, no matter what kind it is, whether it's traditional, it's not just 3D resin, it's any resin. Okay, you make thin little parts, you put too much weight on them, they're going to buckle. Yep. Okay, so much as I love those coyotes, (laughs) I worry about the weight in the leg. Now, that being said, they're pretty straight. So maybe they won't. Now the road. I'm glad runner, you're yawning already. For, you know, yeah, I know the road runner put the legs together. I don't look at that piece as buckling. I, I look at that piece as probably um, will sustain. That being said, when I print a piece like that, I don't know about you, but I would print that neck and those legs solid. Some just to uh, yeah. Say now, although neck- engineering. Hollow pipe is sturdier than a solid pipe in terms of bending. Yeah, I don't know if that applies to resin. Maybe it does. All right, keep going. Where are we at? The next one is the one that got me on this guy. And this is to me, the perfect Ant and Aardvark piece, except for maybe I would put it different. And again, piece you didn't on. even center the images. Oh my God. We'll have to. I did too. It. No, you're not. No, you're not. Well, I'm not dead center. No, it's not. Look at that space at the bottom. Look at the space at the top. What, what's going on? Okay. What I tried. Okay, Sloppy work. Out. Sloppy work. Whatever. You do it. <laughs> so, um, but again, what worries me about this piece is the weight of it on the feet. Well, are you going to print it and find out? Like, what's? I am going to print that. Okay. One. I really like that one a lot. So, um... no, I'll print the body. It's, and what uh, is it for the radio listeners? Hollow. It is the ant, the aardvark, and it's the aardvark chasing the ant. Um, I love it. I and love the next it. one. The next one. A lot here. The line <laughs> with the Pink Panther theme is uh, Pink Panther and the Inspector. It's pretty cool. 
and the inspectors follow in the trail. Um, that's really nice. The next one, I believe, is from an episode of the Pink Panther, where the white man, I, I think they call him the white man, so don't. <laughs> Gotta get his flag twice in the beginning. Here we go. Anyway, the Pink Panther joined the army or whatever, or whatever. And yeah. I just, I just love it. I, I, I just, the arm being too long and the salute and all that. It, it just, I love it. And there he is. And, uh, he was kind of always different characters in the Pink Panther cartoons. And uh, that's a cool piece. And more Pink Panther. And one more from the Pink Panther cartoons is the Inspector... Clouseau. Clouseau, and then I don't know, I forgot. It's a policeman, probably. It looks just but, like a... Uh, um, again, another awesome little piece. And all from the same guy. Just an example of a few of his other things. There's a little Flintstones grouping. We all know how I love the Flintstones. Yep. <laughs> Parasite. And then um, Dick Dastardly and Muttley from Wacky Racers. So I like this guy's stuff. Really I mean, nice. Natty Ramos art on Patreon. Yeah. I've, I'll have to check out his Patreon. Um, I, I'll say that I don't think he's good as well. But no, he's right uh, there in a lot yeah, of things. No. You know, it, it's... He's not bad, so. Who knows? He might just have just started, too. And there's nothing I showed here that I'm probably not going to buy. So. <laughs> All right. I put this in. Uh, a lot of people have probably seen this already. And it is. Fine Scale Modeler is doing a paint award winning figures, like special issue. Uh, and you can pre-order it over there. I think I don't think it's out yet. But it has a lot of people we know, Joe Hudson, Jeff Camp, and some and other Garage oh, yeah. Kid people in there. Oop, oh, Anya. Yeah. Um, so check it out if you're interested. I have, uh, here's Jeff's Terminator. That's going to be in there. Let me get that picture up. There it is. And that's something I always wanted this, if I were going to, I do want to buy this kit. Um, that's kind of how I'd, it's how you have to paint this, actually, to make it look right. So it's beautiful. So. Pre-order that issue, Fine Scale Modeler Paint Award-winning figure. You can also order it digitally as well. You can, or they have oh, okay. a, if you want them both, you can get a printed copy and a digital copy. So they cool. have a... I bought them both. And then, up next, I saw this, and I, it's something I've seen only once before, and I thought we'd share it here. It's the uh, Bioraptor from the movie Pitch Black from the year 2000 way back when and the creatures are in that in that movie were pretty cool uh it's limited to 30 pieces one six scale head on over to ben inside uh on facebook i'll put the link up there it looks like it's 169 dollars usd um and it's coming from overseas but it's a really elegant again another vertical piece doesn't take up a lot of room on your shelf uh and you get a cool creature from a really cool movie so i will say years ago um Matt Manet wanted to sculpt this because he yeah. loved this. Mm-hmm. And I sat there with the movie doing screen grabs. With <laughs> okay. You don't get a lot of good shots of this thing. No. The- okay. Now, I don't know if I've never seen any of the sequels or anything. So I don't know. They're, not, the in, they're not in the sequels at all. This so was just. Only in yeah. that. Well, they might be in. The, but this was. Yeah. That movie was. Particularly- and uh, so there's not a lot of great reference. In it, so I wonder where they got the reference. But. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a cool piece. Really nice. And then, uh, real quick, an update from Nostalgic Resin Productions. Uh, he's turning his Kolchak into a bust, which is something Scott has, you know, you use your sculpt, we've said for years. You can easily take those 3D sculpts and turn them into busts or full figures. And this is fantastic. <laughs> As a quarter scale bust, it's really, really nice. So put him right next to that next to the figure he's as tall as the figure it is in general as far as the bus goes so what do you think I like it. i like all the little trinkets on the base oops there's some yeah here's some details of the base garlic crosses little tiki doll your camera cool stuff and he's on the suitcase it makes up the stem of the bus that's pretty nice good piece so that's coming soon from nostalgic resin production and then I have some stuff here from CA3D Studios over on Patreon. 
Again, these are 3D printed kits. This is what's coming out this month. If you are interested in anything, uh, let me know. And I can probably uh, hook you up since I do pay for the ability to print. And this is the, what's her name? Uh, X-23? Is that what it is? Or X-something? The female yeah. Wolverine? I don't even know. Yeah, in keeping with our... Uh... This will come up later on. <laughs> with later, our theme, uh, you know, let's put boobs and Wolverine. But, but no, no, this was an actual was, character, wasn't it? Like in the like his daughter or something? Yeah, I guess. But that's there. I thought it was a pretty cool sculpture. I like the severed bear. <laughs> uh, this is another one he has coming out. And this is I forget the exact name of that one, but I don't recognize it. Uh, there's a pretty cool Zeus he has coming, which is there. And then a pretty nifty Magneto. And a really nice Jubilee. It is a nice Magneto. And I, I, the files come out in a couple of days, so I don't know. I was thinking if you do that, uh, you do that bubble gum in clear somehow and make it look cool, but I don't know. You almost have to do it in clear and then paint it pink, I think. Unless there's pink resin somewhere. Or you can tint it, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So there's that. That's all the stuff from CA3D. And I then, like, and I realize this is just a render, but what a cool way to paint it. Yeah. With the X, um, if you were to paint that as the light source coming up on our legs, that'd be pretty cool. You could even print that in clear and then light the base and have the light come up like that. Yeah, it's a lot. That is a lot of work. <laughs> but no, that's a, I, I, it's the glasses too. I wonder if those, I hope those are a separate piece. But because you don't want to print the whole head in clear. But. That's not just me thinking out loud. All right. And then up next, Kutan, the other one I'm on. I thought this one was his renders. You talk about Wells' <laughs> renders. Fuck. Kutan's renders are insanely good right now. Yeah, they are. But, man, look at that. I wasn't so hyped on this one. I was like, oh, it's just going to be a pirate girl. But I, I, the monkey has sold me. <laughs> Monkey's awesome. And then he also has from... I think you're... Uh... I made your mom dress up. Yeah. Oh, really? A pirate or like this dress? Pirate, pirate, pirate wench. You know. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, here's. I think it's no time to die. The one of the chicks from that Bond movie. So we have this as well from Kutan this month, which I thought were pretty cool sculpts. And then we show these guys a lot. Vengeance Studios doing some really cool stuff. Uh, they're finishing up finally their Goonies diorama. So if you're interested in that, head over to Vengeance Studios. Uh, the two girls just came out this month, and I think Sloth and Chunk are next to round out the entire diorama. It is a huge piece. With now total you're a fan of, of this movie that I've never seen. I can't. I don't even want to talk to you right now. Um, how do you like these likenesses and stuff? You like? Them? They're close. They're they're. I mean, they're close enough for what they are. Um, mm -hmm. I think some are better than others. Um, but they're close. I I, I think kind of what. It's something that Troy, it's the fact that somebody has done this outweighs the likeness for me because mm -hmm. there really hasn't been something this like there's a lot of sloth, but taking on all the characters from the, the group of kids to do this is just, I think, a really huge undertaking and to pull it off perfectly is impossible. And I think this is as close as you're going to probably get. I mean, it's close, close. Um, the other one is the Angry Princess, continuing the 13 Ghosts line, which is one I've been waiting for. I This, again, was something I wanted done in Garage Kit Land forever, was all the ghosts from the movie, and they're doing it over there at Vengeance Studios. So head on over to Patreon for those, and I think he's they're available somewhere else too, but mm. Patreon's the best place to get his stuff, or just message him over oh. on Facebook. We'll have those links up. So I, all right. So I want to bring this up. This is the Patreon I just started following and, and subscribe to. Die click heart. It's like <laughs> I think we're doing the uh, Sean Connery on Saturday Night Live on Jeopardy <laughs> with this one oh, and I pronouncing it. it in different ways. But I found this anal Patreon bum covers, anal bum covers. And... <laughs> yeah. I bought something from this person a while ago, which was the Ghoulies file, and it was from the movie poster with the ghoulies coming out of the toilet from ghoulies 2 and i love ghoulies these kind of 80s schlock horror movies that came out 
and she's really into this stuff. So you got gre- you got gremlins, critters, all sorts of really cool stuff. But I noticed, and she has some really nice welcome packs that are available. So when you do sign up right away, you get everything on the screen here. Ghoulies stuff, Vampirellas, Wednesday Adams, Gremlins, little Go- Grogu's, some cool stuff. And you get a second welcome pack, which has something I've always wanted. And if I remember back to the garage kit that ate my wallet, the revenge, the one that I found first, was the troll. And I think it was a dimensional designs kit. Was the troll from Cat's Eye is something you can get. And it has the really and the really goofy Howard the Duck movie, which is amazing. And Scott, I know, hates this, but it it's movie classic. And you get the TV Pennywise. You get from Return of the Living Dead. You get trash. And you get a, a pretty cool Jason Voorhees, all for just signing up. So great offer, but what she has coming soon, I think might be a Frankenstein's monster, but this was with this month and it's a Nosferatu. And this is what got me to sign up. And it is a beautiful Nosferatu. Uh, I have printed it. So I have it here in front of me. So I want to show you the pictures first. These are her renders and there's just the straight file. Okay. So I did print one. So I have one right here and I want to kind of show everybody. Uh, this, this is the figure it's, we decided it's like one ninth. What did we say? One seventh scale kind of, it's about 10 inches tall, mm-hmm. but I want everyone to kind of see the detail. I know it's really hard down here, but there's his face, stay. there's a teeth and all that. And it's really, really nice. It's a nice, simple plane. My only complaint is I wish that that was deeper where it goes up into the coat. But if you're looking at it at the right angle, you're never going to notice and the legs just plug in perfectly. And I want people to see how awesome these claws are. On this hand, I know it's get on my face. Yeah, Come you on. dropped that. You're printing another one. I know. I'm not getting a good view of it. Here you go. Stop. Yep. Good. So, yep. so you get some really great Nosferatu hands with it. And it's awesome. Okay. And so then the next one she has as well that came out recently, that's, I think when you sign up, you can still get it, is this Morticia Adams, which I just finished printing today. I was working out some kinks in my print. And again, it's also about one tenth scale. And that fits nice too. It plugs in perfectly. The only problem is you're going to have a weird seam to kind of fill in. And the arms, let me see if I can get the arms up. The arms are your, your typical Morticia Adams pose. I didn't pull all the supports out yet, but there's the face. And it comes with two options with eyelashes and without eyelashes. And it's great. I really, really like her stuff. So, and that's, I mean, they, the parts fit perfectly and I couldn't be happier with signing up for her stuff. So, uh, what I want to do is I have one of each of these to give away. I have a Nosferatu and I have a Morticia Adams. I'm going to give away. Now here's the catch. This is only for people who have never even touched a 3d print. Okay. So I'm trying to bring people in some of your traditional garage kit guys that are like, Nope, I'll never do that. Or it's no good. I want someone to be able to get a decent, the parts fit perfectly. Everything's great. Great likenesses. Gr- classic garage kit kind of subject matter, especially this Nosferatu, which is fantastic. I don't know if you can see the teeth. So, so, come on. Anyway, the teeth are there. So, this is the honor system. Um, if you have never, ever even touched or built a 3D printed kit. You can enter for these. If you have, please don't enter. I, I it's an honor system. I can't say you can't do it. I but Bill Wilson, I know you're will be lying. So you're not eligible. And there's other people <laughs> I know that are eligible that are not eligible. I mean, that if you try to enter, I'm not even going to put your name in there. So if I know you have a printer or if I know you've built a 3D you're not getting in. So this is for anyone who has never ever ever touched any 3D anything printed model kit. I have a Nosferatu and a Vampirella. Uh, put in the comments down below, 3D print for me, and 
I'll enter you in. The first name we pull next episode will get the Nosferatu. Or no, they'll get to choose. That's what they'll do. They get to choose either the Moticia or the Nosferatu. And then the second person will get the one they didn't pick. So that's where we're at. And I really, really like her stuff. So go over there, check it out. Links for everything down below. And we'll go from there. Workbench, Scott. What are you working on? I got a picture. I'm going to put up here of my workbench. Uh, I did not get a chance to get it off my phone. You are working on some, not, not building and painting, but you are printing for people. What do you got going on? Can you talk about any of it? I don't know if I can. Or... <laughs> so, um, what's your week been no, like? I'm, I'm, I'm printing, um, got a lot of odds and ends going on. So it's, um, trying to catch up, sold a few King Kongs and, uh, so I'll be going to the post office tomorrow. Excuse me. Which reminds me, I got to email a guy back tonight. I got two boxes going out tomorrow. Post office starting to like me. Oh, yeah? Good. At least somebody is. And uh trying to think what else. There's anything else. No. Probably when Nothing. I get done with this, I'm going to work on some files. So I like to have files ready to go. So like when I go down there and I do things, I stir up my resin. I clean my vats. Put it all up. Boom. You stir your resin? Wow. It's strange. That's such yeah, a it's, it's such a daunting it's task to it's stir. Stirring stuff. Uh I've been working on my Mask of the Red Death. And I know I this will be the first in a video series of building on this channel and painting something. Uh it's been weird. It's like <laughs> Garage Kit History, Cold Cast Porcelain, and White Metal. Uh, trying to get that stuff straightened out. And there's something that I wanted to ask the audience that I did. I'd never seen before. And maybe, you know, so the audience won't have to answer, but I had to sand off on one of these cold cast bases here. I primed them so far and it's, I sanded off here, but I forgot. I missed a spot. I don't know if you can see this on there. Hold on. Focus Get up a little more. It's right on the edge only. All right, there. Yeah. See that? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of if you have wet paint and you put your hand on it and then pull it off and it leaves like a stucco style to it. Maybe. What causes that with cold, cold cast porcelain? I don't know because I don't know how long cold cast takes to here. Because it wasn't on both of them. Only one of them. It almost looked like someone had like white paint and they just like, like it was like a stucco effect on the porcelain all over parts of this. And I had to sand it off. And I was just, I'd never seen that before. So I was wondering what it was. And it wasn't primer. It wasn't paint. Um, I don't like cold cast porcelain. <laughs> it's terrible. Very toxic. To oh, too. Maybe that's why I'm wondering too. Like I've had a, a hypersensitive reaction to something. My fingertip itch for two and a half days. Like terribly. And it almost like broke out in hives. And I can't tell if it was a, magic sculpt like epoxy or 3d resin or porcelain or because all this stuff kind of happened at once and i'm now i'm going to go through and test things and see how it goes but man it, it brings back memories i just have to drill into the head of the phantom here in a minute and i'm, I'm waiting for that high-pitched wine <laughs> sound that and smell yeah and that Sounds smell like Dennis. yep so that's where i'm at i am building that i once everything's primed I had some people, and I'll talk more about this on the other show a little bit. Some people did send me some marbling technique videos in, and I'll share those after I watch them and, and get kind of familiar with them. But uh, I'm, I'm building, painting, still working on my Godzilla, still working on some other stuff, but we're there actually doing stuff. So I think that brings us to our guest. You want to introduce Troy? No. Yeah. I'll <laughs> So Troy's gonna go into his history a little bit and you'll you'll hear me talk about the first piece that I saw that he did that I really liked. Um I like Troy's style. Um and I like Troy's execution of comic characters. As opposed to all this hyper detailed stuff that we all know I don't like. So um you know, I like Troy. Troy's uh it's a good time. A good time. He's a good guy. He's a he's a good time. 
and always friendly, always outgoing, and uh, making a living doing what he loves. So that's awesome, too. Yeah. So enjoy. All right. We are back with Troy McDevitt. How are you, sir? (laughs) Thanks for joining us at such short notice and getting us on and like ready to go. This is awesome. How are you, sir? Thank you for having me, man. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. This is, this is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this. Okay. What part of the world are you in? Where are you at? I'm in North Carolina. Okay, cool. I'm about, uh, I'm about 20 minutes away from Charlotte. Born and raised, or you ended up there, or no, where did you grow up? up. And so all the family, my whole family is up in uh, Buffalo, and oh. uh, so that's my whole family. And then um, my dad was in the Marines, so we moved around a lot, and um, I spent all of high school like uh, in North Carolina, and um, and then we moved back to North or back to Buffalo after he retired, and. Um, I moved back down to North Carolina by myself to live with two of my buddies um, at East Carolina University, uh, which is where my son goes to college now. Uh, my daughter is at NC State, and so they're they're both here, but not here. Um, and um, and yeah, and then I met my wife at ECU, and then uh, we moved around a little bit. But most of my ties, I've lived in North Carolina more than any place else, so I was happy to settle back here. So. Um, so yeah, so shortly after the kids were born, we moved um, back here to Concord. Cool. What was Buffalo like? Cold. Cold. I was just there over the summer. <laughs> I was like, <clears throat> yeah, it's it, what, it it's, reminds me a lot of here. It was very Chicago-y. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, my mom thinks that I. She thinks I hate Buffalo, and she <laughs> thinks that I'm always like trash talking Buffalo, and I'm really not. Buffalo is like every other city in every other state. It's got good things, got bad things. The yeah. only bad thing for me is just i don't want to live somewhere where it's like cold most of the time and and again and again it's got great summers it's a it again there's beautiful places i i really again she's got this whole mindset of like i really hate the place and i'm just like i really don't i just i like i like the weather down south more so gotcha scott question or no no i just the bat you good okay was a couple years ago when it was it got like 36 inches of snow and roofs were collapsing and shit. It's like, oh no, that was that was last year. Last year yeah. was the last year was the biggest blizzard since like 77. Like 77 yeah. was the big blizzard that like people died and like they wrote books about. And last year it was um the first one since then. And it was it was bad. It was, you know, it, it, yeah. Um my, you my gotta whole... get on your roof and shovel snow. Okay. What's that? When you gotta get on your roof to shovel snow. Oh that's yeah, that's a problem. Oh, yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well over, like well over cars and stuff like that, and like way up to like your living room window and stuff. Like it was, it was crazy. I kinda, so oh, that'd be fun for a little bit. And you know what? <laughs> and then <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> listen, dude. That's exactly it. It's super fun for a very short time, but like, <laughs> but the longer it goes on, it's just one of those things that has diminished returns. Like the longer <laughs> it's there. And then just as it begins, like basically when it when it first lands and it's that pretty white and you're looking out, it's just gorgeous and it's so much fun and it's just like, oh, it's a wonderland. And then after a few weeks when everything's gray, it's just slushy and it's just everything's wet and it's just nasty looking and, you know, yep. yeah. My friend who flies into, sh- who lived here for a very, very long time and moved out West and every time he flies in, he's like, he always types on Facebook, landed in Chicago. It's like a cold, wet blanket <laughs> every time. <'cause> it's <laughs> overcast gray, horrible. Anyway. Yeah, but again, but again, but, and the whole thing is I'm not shitting on places that are up north that have a lot no. of So if you love that, again, a lot of people like uh, that. I love it. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm all for it. I got nothing against it. It's just not for me, yeah. you know? So growing up there, how did you get interested in all this stuff? Was it something that happened there or was it something that happened? later on so no so so basically the start of it is my dad drew my dad drew a lot he was a really good artist and um so he would draw me star wars things and like you know little you know monsters and stuff like that and like um and i've still got them and they're still great and um and then he just kind of like dropped out it was more of just a kind of a side fun thing for him uh he picked it up from his mom and so um and so right from the start, I was always just drawing. And um, and so 
my ambitions went from the first thing that I wanted to do as a job, like as a career, was I wanted to be like a cartoonist like um, uh, Bill Watterson, like Calvin and Hobbes, which was just my favorite. And um, and then uh, I never really wanted to be a comic book artist because I always viewed that as too hard. I always thought that was too hard. But I would I would see like Sunday Funnies and I was like, oh, I was like four like panels. I could do that. Like I could do four. And like half the time they don't draw on the backgrounds and it's just the characters. So I was like, yeah. So for a long time, I wanted to be like a cartoonist. And then um, and then all my jobs, they always, somehow they're art related. So like I went from, um, uh, I, I worked in a t-shirt shop as in the art department doing t-shirt designs. And then um, uh, me and my buddy uh, started doing our own t-shirts. And then I went into graphic design and I, uh, worked for a company for graphic design that he and i started a so my buddy gannon that i brought to wonderfest several times so a lot of the guys know gannon uh he's been my like my best friend since like uh we were like juniors in high school and um he and i have probably started like four or five businesses together like we've always <laughs> like literally we've had, i've got behind me i've got a stack of business cards from like five different businesses that like <laughs> That like we did. And um, and so everyone, for some reason or another, each one didn't work out, but he and I never called them failures. We always call them just learning lessons, right, you know? Yeah. They're, yeah, they're just things you learn. So we started a graphic design business and then um and then did that for several years. And then we had um some online stuff. We had this uh, Marine Corps online stuff where we were doing a bunch of things, uh cartoons, t-shirts, different things like that. And um, I was just getting burned out on it. I was getting burned out on graphic design and stuff. And so um, I had made uh, my wedding cake topper for um, uh, my wedding for my and my wife's. And um, so it was her and I, and I was like a knight in shining armor and she was like a princess. And that was our wedding cake topper. And so it was maybe, I don't know, a year or two later where I was still doing the graphic design and I just couldn't take it anymore. And she heard of... Um, we were living in Virginia at the time and um, she heard of a, uh, a wedding convention that was coming up in Baltimore, which is like just a couple hours away. And um, she said, listen, she goes, why don't we um, take your wedding cake topper and like set up a table and see, you know, if you could do wedding cake toppers. And, um, and I was like, all right, sure. Why not? So I literally went to Kinko's and I got like business cards printed up. Like I, we got in because somebody dropped out. So I had like four days before like it started. So that's how much prep I had. And so um, I had a big banner made at Kinko's and I had like business cards printed up and we went and we got this little tiny table and I had one cake topper, like sitting in the middle of the table. There was nothing else. So it was just like, it was just like a statue, a couple business cards, a little banner. Um, and that was it. And it exploded. Like I had more people at my table. And so it was just at a time where nobody was doing that. You yeah. know, nobody was doing that. And so for almost three years, that's what I did. I did wedding cake toppers, custom wedding cake toppers. Um, and I just, for all over the world, I would ship them to, I literally shipped to Australia. I shipped to Italy. I shipped uh, just all over. And um, and I did that for about three years. And then. Um, so, I mean, sculpting wise, basically, um, prior to the cake topper, I don't remember what it was, but I had heard somebody, um, or I'd seen something it, again, early days, of the internet, I had seen something about Sculpey or I'd read something in a magazine maybe. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. And I actually found a little bit. And so I started playing with Sculpey and I would make these little tiny statues for like my family and I'd make something for staff and things. So I just made a few little dopey little statues. And then I made the wedding cake topper after that. So that was the start of my sculpting like career. I just kind of jumped into it for fun. That's and, so cool. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. And um and uh, you know what? I'm almost positive it was magazines because I think at the time internet was still the you know loading you know like yeah, yeah. one so I'm pretty sure it was magazines. And I probably probably read an article about the Shiflet brothers, if I had to guess. Okay. It, it, it was probably the Shiflet brothers, because I do remember them way early on. And um, that's how old they are, too. And uh, well, that's how I was gonna how how old of a guy are you? Because we like to whenever we have guests 
We kind of place yeah. them who they're closer to, Scott or I, and then we we judge them based on that. <laughs> how old, how old do you think? How old do you think I am? I think you're my age, so go ahead. I think you're uh, close. No, I, I want to hear. I want to hear. Fif- what, in your fifties? Huh? Fifties? Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. I'd 50 say fifty-five. Too. What, what'd you say? Ah, okay. Did you All say right, so I'm reading old. See, I knew I got to shave the beard. I went older. <laughs> what did you say? 52? 52. Okay. So he's a year older yeah. than me. All right. That makes you yeah. cooler. If you're closer oh, to okay. Scott, I always look. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the reason so I you get some I Gen X vibes five. instead of the baby boomer vibes that come from, from over there. So. Yeah. But if I'm a baby boomer, I'd be looking uh, good right now. I, I, I'd you, be would. Look, you would. I'd be looking really good. <laughs> no, but look at me. I, we know Scott. Yeah, we, we know. know. We know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always see. I always thought initially Troy was a little older because <clears throat> when it comes to Troy's comic likes, they're very similar to mine, uh-huh. which is which means uh, '70s comic kids, you know. And then we w- worked our way back, and you know, into the stuff. So when I've seen a lot of Troy's work, a lot of it seemed like it was from that era. That's me, my favorite. You know? So so. Just to jump off real quick on my long story about how I got started. How did you get into comics first? Um, watching Spider-Man cartoons. Do you remember like where your first comics came from? Yes. Yes. Where? Where? The grocery store that I went to as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Had a machine. Oh, and... not, a, not a spinner rack? No, it had one of those machines. That you'd put, so you'd see covers, okay? Yeah. And you'd see covers, and so I was also a Batman kid, obviously, you know, in the late 60s. So you'd see the comics, and ooh, there's a Batman comic. And so back then it was a dime and a nickel. you put in there, and you'd like push it and slide it, and the comic would fall down. What? Yeah, I'm... you never saw one of those I've never things, seen one, huh? no. Mine wow. what he was talking about, the spinner rack, like at yeah, 7-Eleven and but... stuff, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so then I, um, you know, so I'd get an occasional comic like that, and I always liked superhero stuff. Started watching Spider Man, started buying Spider Man comics, which led to everything else in the early seventies. And uh, what about you, Jason? What about you? Are you? A I, comic? I was. I was more of a ninety. I got into the comics more in the nineties when everyone else kind of did. I was never oh, okay. a huge comic book guy. Like I just, I was more of the. Sp- sp- sword and sandals movie kind of guy like oh, fantasy movies and sci-fi stuff but gotcha, gotcha some comics gotcha. like some of some of that stuff in the 90s but yeah and the comics well, i liked God. were more like faust and the tim Vid- tim vigil stuff uh yeah. from rebel studios and the real adult crazy over the top stupid stuff is yeah yeah yeah, yeah, really yeah. Into. yeah well like scott like scott so mine was like when i first started so so i was born in 71 and um and so when I was a little kid, I could, my first um, exposure to it was my grandma would walk me down the street and there was a little newsstand. Like you would see, it looked just like the newsstand in Watchmen. Um, God. like that dude who has yeah, it yeah. in Watchmen. It would look just like that. And she would buy me a couple comics. And my first comics were like Joe Kubert, uh, Tarzan and, um, and, uh, John Buscema, like Conan, which is why that's still my favorite to this day. And so she would pick up like a few. And so that was my first comics. And I started off with that. And then kind of like always had those drifted out of it a little bit. But then eventually when my dad, when we lived on base, um, the, uh, the Marines, they were so young. What the Marines would do is the guys would go and buy a bunch of comics. And then when they were done, they would throw them away. So instead of throwing them away, my dad would just bring back home boxes of comics that these young Marines had just read and tossed. Oh, wow. And, and so from that point on, that's when I, and all those comics, Scott, they were all like um, George Perez Avengers and like, um, you know, like um, just um, old, like Silver Age stuff. And like, it was just old school. So like you're saying, like our taste in comics, I, I, I'm such a fan of just the old school stuff. Like that's my, that's my favorite. Like, again, you know, Jack Kirby, George Perez, like, um, you know, uh, Joe Perez, Perez, John, John Buscema, like all those guys are like, so yeah, that's like what I love to do more than anything. So, well, I stopped a conversation because I wanted to get it recorded. A Jack Kirby conversation between the two of you. Oh yeah. Continue that. Why did he suddenly make sense to you at some point? 
Oh, who knows? I, I really don't know. I just, I, I just got like, I was like Scott where like, um, for my whole young life, I would look at Jack Kirby and I would be like, this is the worst anatomy I've ever seen. I would be like, it's so, I would be like, oh my God, it's so awful. It's so like everything, nothing like it, the perspective's weird. And I was just like, it's just terrible. Why is he such a, th-? and then, um, like I told Scott, Somewhere in my 30s, something just clicked, and I looked at it, and I was just like, oh, my God, I'm an idiot. He is a genius. <laughs> and I got that it wasn't – none of the perspective like or anatomy mattered. It wasn't about that. It was about – he made just exciting con- – he made things like – it. It you almost could, like, hear the sound effects. And, like, when you saw things – and they were so crazy perspective – so much crazy perspective – and it was like, and I was like, yes, this is what comics should be. I was like, this is like, this is the way it should be. It should be big and crazy and fun and like, just like over the top. And then I just started understanding his style a lot more and, and really how hard it is to, um, to not overdo like uh, a drawing, you know, to not like, you know, he, he was able to do so much and keep it really simple and, um, and, and stylized. Like he came up with a style that like nobody could copy, you know, and every so many guys tried and nobody could. And um, and yeah, so ever since then, I've just been, yeah, I've been a huge. Would you call huge... what he did storytelling with his art? I mean, when you looked at it, it it almost told the story without the words. OK. And, yeah. And, which was the Marvel way of doing it anyway, kind of. But um, yeah, it was just it did. And, and like you, I, I grew an appreciation of it. It's still not my favorite. Okay, but it's yeah. it, because it's not what I. He's a polarizing artist. He's a polarizing I, yeah, artist. Yeah, and, and I, I came in at a great time when you had the Busimas and the Neil Adams and uh, um, George Perez, when George Perez was yeah. first starting out on Fantastic Four. and But yet it still had that Kirby feel because Sinnott was inking Perez at the time. Yeah, and he had also in Kirby, um, and then when I got I got out of comics for a little while in the late seventies, and I got pulled back in by Frank Miller's Daredevils, John Burns X Men's, yeah, uh, and stuff like that. So I really like um, I'm going to call it, <laughs> I, for lack of a better term, what I like to call line art. And when I say line art, it, it, it's like I got just just, just happens to be sitting here because I just got it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like this Neil Adams cover, but it it's you know it's basic. This is the type of art I grew up with, and when I see this stuff now, I just go, ugh. It, it's <laughs> I stopped in '92, Troy. I like I was like I'm done. See, that's kind of when I picked up. <laughs> that's when I started yeah, buying like, stuff. I, I'm done, I, and I'm still done. Um, oh, once in a while, I'll pick something I, up, but I don't. I don't. I, I stopped collecting the way that I used to like a long time ago, mainly, honestly, mainly because of cost, because it's just so expensive now. It's crazy, crazy expensive. But um, but I still love looking at it. I still go in and look at it. I'm going to tell you right now, Scott, there's phenomenal artists. now. Like there's just guys who are I get it's dude. It, it's the way that comics have always, always been. There's really crap stuff out there and there's great stuff. There's there's artists now that just blow me away. I, I just don't even understand how they do like get a comic done. Like it looks like it would take a year to finish it. And like, you know, some of these guys are just unbelievable. So there's another yeah. guy that I always hear gets total crap for his anatomy. And that's Rob Liefeld. Or, Who, I, I knew, who's worse? Who's worse? Kirby or Liefeld? <laughs> Listen, it's, it's not even worth going into because <laughs> everything that can be said about Liefeld has been said. Right. And, the guys who love him love. I've done a lot of statues for um, uh, collectors who really love him, yeah. and uh, and some of my like some of my best clients, some some guys that I really really like a lot, and they just love him. It's just, and I'm sort of like, again, art's one of those things. It's so subjective. It's just like, and that's it's why one of those things. I didn't even notice until someone pointed it out. Because when I did read some of his stuff or saw some, of it, I was just like, oh, okay, comic comic picture, comic picture, reading the book. And then someone's like, oh, look at that. It's terrible. And I'm like, oh, crap, you're right. But in the moment, I didn't notice. And I, get, I don't and, think and, it matters. 
yeah, I, I, I've got my own opinions on it. I think, you know, and again, everybody does. And it's he's when you don't talk about polarizing, I don't think there's anybody who's more polarizing than him. But <laughs> but it's like, it, again, I'm like you in the 90s. I had all those. I had all the young blood. I had yeah. like the entire image I had when I would in the 90s, like at your point, yeah. um, I literally like no joke like this one. I you think back on these days, I'm like, oh, my God, that was so nice. Like, no other responsibilities. Dude, I would blow 200 bucks every time I, <laughs> every time I went to the store. They would have my poll list, and I would walk out, and I'm not lying. It was a stack that was, like, <laughs> this big. And it was, like, $200 worth of comics of my poll list. And it was so, it was every image that was coming out. Like, every image. Um, and, yeah, at the time... And some of those were great. Like the Max yeah. is still great. I love the artwork in Max. And even the spa, the early Spawn stuff was really, really good too. And I, loved, I loved I loved Savage Dragon. Savage, I yep. loved I loved Wildcats. I loved like uh like all of them. Like they're yeah, yeah. They're they were all great. I loved them all. Like, you know, and then That's yeah. cool. So after the cake toppers, how did that shift oh, yeah. to where we are now? Like what Yeah. So yeah, so I'll I'll wrap it up because no, 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 I'm not saying, but I'm just. Oh no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. But um, so the cake I did that for about three years, and I just got to the point where I was just I was getting again. The thing that is is I don't I don't love the topic of weddings. I don't love the topic <laughs> of like, neither does Scott. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, but I'm not a. That's not like anything I have a passion for. So I was just getting like to where I was like, oh, I'm getting tired. And when you were when you're saying you were doing custom ones, would people call in and say, "I need this and this," and then you would make those two, or were you making Dude, your own and then people were just buying those? I had it. I had it set up so good. Like at, like at a time again when nobody else was doing this, I had it so perfected. So what I did is, um, my website was set up where. I had all these different price levels and I had it from um, the very cheapest price level down to the most expensive. So the most expensive was a fully custom cake topper. And what you did is I had a, I had all these sheets that you would uh, print out and it would tell you what angles I need of your face. I need pictures of like what you're wearing. I need to know what poses you're in. I need all the details. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. And, and then they would send me all of that. They would send me all of their pictures. And based on that, I would make these really cool, like perfectly custom wedding cake hours. But then what I did is um, uh, I had all of these. Um, so and those wedding cake toppers generally were bigger. Then I had smaller ones, much smaller ones um, that were probably more traditional size cake toppers. Um, but I had sculpted all of these. Um, uh, uh, the bride and groom bodies, different ones, and they were generic. And I had molded and cast them. And then I had like, um, and so I had a level where you could pick one of these bodies, pick the bride and the groom, and then I would do a custom head. And then the cheapest one was I had all these heads done, and you could pick the head that was closest to yours. <laughs> and I could, and and almost That's all awesome. of them were like, all of them were like bald. So the only thing that I would add is like your hair, and um. And so I would add uh, the bride or groom's hair on it, but that was it. And that was the cheapest level. So you could basically get a cake topper for like, um, like, I don't know, it was like two or three hundred dollars for one of the basic ones. And then I painted it. So it was all yeah. painted. So it was like maybe three hundred dollars. And then the fully custom one got up to the point where it was like two grand. And um and dude, I was slammed. Like I was, and they were all, it was a variety of stuff, but it was mostly the fully custom ones um, because weddings are one of those things that at the time, like, it's almost like when you're having a get, weddings, you have a budget, almost everybody has a budget and they've got money and they want to spend the money, you know? And yeah. it's almost, you know, so it was a oh, wow. great, it was a great thing to do. So, but then at, Right around the time that I was getting tired of doing cake toppers um, is when I started finding online places like the Clubhouse, um, and um, and the Clubhouse and Statue Forum, and um, there was Deviant Art, and there was uh, ConceptArt.org, 
Um, but the clubhouse was the big one. The clubhouse is where I met everybody. I met I met Tony Cipriano. I met Ray Villafane. I met Mark Newman. I met Andy Bergholz. I met um, uh, Randy Bowen. Well, and that's so. So I started going on to the clubhouse, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "There are guys like making money doing superhero statues." <laughs> now I didn't love wedding cake stuff. I loved superheroes and monsters. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. So I started, like, on my free time, just sculpting little superheroes and stuff. And I would post them, and I would get, like, really good feedback. And um, next thing you know, I would start getting people saying, hey, how much for one? And I was like, holy shit, I could make a living doing, like, superheroes and monsters. And, you know, and I, like, told my wife, I was like, not doing weddings anymore. I'm like, I'm doing superheroes <laughs> and monsters. You know, and her whole thing, of course, was, you know, how are you going to make money doing superheroes and monsters? <laughs> I was like, trust me, there's a whole industry built on it. Yeah. I didn't even know. And, um, and remember, uh, remember when Ray showed his first pumpkin that he did, like way back oh, yeah. when, and he was oh, like, yeah. "Look what I did with a pumpkin," and everyone was like, "Holy crap!" And now that guy is like, Dude, huge. I remember. When, <laughs> I remember when it was Ray, when Ray was doing like his first statues, like his yeah. first like sculpts. I mean, I remember yeah. his first things, and so um. And so I started getting like bit by bit, I was able to start transitioning out of weddings and I just started like getting like commissions and stuff. And it went from just private guys to garage kit guys to like companies. And eventually <clears throat> um, one of my big breaks was um, I really wanted to do something for Randy Bowen, uh, for Bowen Designs. And, um, and I ended up doing, um, I was like, um, I picked a really obscure character. And I think the first one I did, oh boy, I think the first one I did was Ringmaster. Um, and um, and I basically just, I did him and I think I sent him pictures and um, and he contacted me back and he was like, yeah, this is cool. He's like, um, you know, yeah, let's do something. And so Randy was like one of the first, like he was the first big job I got. And I did like a bunch of pieces for Randy and, um, and he was awesome. Of course he was uh, totally awesome. Um, and, um, you know, and then it just went from there. So. Cool. We just had, Oh my God. I just had a stroke. Who we just have on that was working for Randy before. Um, John Diaz. Oh, John. Yeah. Well, John. He sold some pieces. Sold Randy. pieces. That's what it was. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. That Helder had done um yeah helder did a bunch yeah how many did you do for bowen complete you know oh man um so I i'm did, just trying to look i'm looking at um I probably did six or seven busts i was gonna say you did ulick was that you yeah. i did i can tell you right now i did ringmaster man ape ulick blastar cannonball um executioner um Oh, um, Arcade. Arcade was really cool. Arcade was oh, probably great. my favorite one you did for them. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, not so that the other ones weren't good, because I have them all, but... Uh... Oh, <laughs> seven. I think, um, I think that's it. I think that's it. And then I did a whole bunch of um, uh, customizations on his pieces, for, like little things like um, costuming. So, like... So like he sent me the body for the um the Hulk he did. So the first Hulk that he did where he did um uh four versions of the Hulk. So it was Hulk, Red Hulk, Maestro, and Gray Hulk. Yeah. And they were all kind of standing in a similar pose. And he sent me the body and I did like the pants on those. And for like Maestro, I did like the uh the the armbands and the sash around his waist and his boots and like so it was all costuming. And then I did, um, I worked on those Hulks. I worked on his uh, Electro full body pieces. Again, just doing the costuming. He did everything. He did everything else. And then uh, like a Daredevil piece. Um, and um, yeah, so that was, that was mostly what I did. So, so let's oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me, let me, so I'm going to go with one of the first pieces I saw, if not the first piece I saw that you did. And I don't know why it just really struck me. And at first I looked at it and go, that thing's goofy. But then I looked at it and go, wow, that's really cool. 
and see if you can guess what it is. You can tell me how early it is. Uh, it was a Batman piece. Uh-huh. And a Joker. Batman and Joker? Yeah. Are you sure I did it? Oh, I know you did it. Yeah. The punch oh, 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 yeah. Oh, no, no. Oh, my punchline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my punchline. Punch that was- oh, I love that thing. That's in the slideshow. Um, yeah, I got it. So it's just the Batman fist hitting the Joker. <laughs> yeah. And the Joker's face. And Jason, I don't know if you could see in the pictures. Um, there's a little tooth that goes on Batman's thumb. But it yeah. was so cool that it looked so like like that you caught it in mid thing. Yeah. And I remember for years I bugged you. I mean, man, are you gonna ever release that? And yeah, well, I might one of these days. And you finally did, I think, or you re released. Oh, yeah. No, it I or... did. It's sold. It and, sold uh, it burned the molds out like it sold so much. Like <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean that was um dude that was that was legitimately one of my first like uh pieces that i posted at the clubhouse that got me like a lot of like work like it was um and you know what and that's always that's one of the things is like that's always been um what i've leaned into a lot more style wise than anything else is um caricatures and like cartoons and stuff so i've never been the best at like um super realistic and like um and straight like real portraits i've done them i've done plenty of them i'm not the best at them like i it's always like kind of like uh, it's more of a struggle for me and when i pull it off i'm sort of like okay i'm glad that that looks decent but um but it's never been my forte my forte has always been like more cartoony caricature like and um yeah that piece <clears throat> That piece, I knew exactly like what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be like over the top and just kind of, you know. And it sort of goes back to like what we were talking about, like with Kirby, just that sort of like not the style, but just that feel. I wanted the feel of like the anatomy and stuff is not important. It's goofy. It's, it's well, yeah. goofy, but it's what's, cool. What's, what's yeah. important? What's important for me, especially with that one, was do you feel it? Can you feel that he's getting punched in the face? You yes. know. And and like I said, to me that tooth was just like the, the crowning <laughs> jewel. I don't know why. Okay, but it's like it's it's like you know. And it, at that time, I always bought likenesses. Okay, whether it was classic monsters, superheroes, I bought likenesses. So this is one of the first kind of stylized things that I saw. That I said, "This is really cool. I, I like this." And then I'll go on to say that the second piece you did. Well, I don't want to say the second piece you did. The second piece that really I took notice. Um, you made that brick of a lawn ornament. Um, Sal Buscema <laughs> Hulk. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. I never liked the Sal Buscema Hulk, but you nailed the look of the Sal Buscema had a style of doing the Hulk. Scott, do we have oh, a picture thanks. of this? Which one is it? Um, in his Hulk bust group, you'll see a Sal Buscema Hulk. Okay. And um, he's punching through a wall. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the I, that's one picture I couldn't find was. um. Oh, yeah. yeah no, but the bus, it's not the bus, the, though. It's the full body one. Yeah. OK. Yeah. No, I'm talking the full body one, but you did yeah, a bus, too, I'm sure. So, no, no, I did. A, I did the bus, but the full body one is the one right. that. Has the look. Yeah. And that one kind of cemented me like as a as a Hulk guy, which I didn't mind because again, I love the Hulk. And so my my blessing slash curse now is that because I've done so many Hulks, that's it, generally it's almost like whatever you do, if you do it decent, those are the jobs that you're going to get requested for. So like if I just did really cool cars, I would just get a lot of car guys who hit me up, you know, um, since I do, since I've done so many hulks and I, I've done a decent job at the hulks that I've done, um, that's a lot of like what I get requests for. And so I'm sort of like in this thing where like, I love the Hulk. I don't mind doing it, but it's like, a lot of people are like, I've literally had people say, oh, I thought you only did Hulks. <laughs> and I'm like, no, um, I've, I've done other stuff. So, Which Scott, is, you know what question we have. how got on the episode, just so you know. Hold on, Jason. Scott, I stepped on you. Say that again. Oh, that's how we got on the episode, just so you know. Two years ago, I bought a 
Herb Trimpy um, Hulk bust from him at Wonderfest. Oh, okay. And I wanted the um, Kirby, and he was sold out at the time. So when you posted those latest ones, I messaged him. I said, hey, you still got that Kirby one? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I bought it. And um, and I was like, hey, you want to come on the show? <laughs> and he's like, what the uh, hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. And here I am busted on Kirby. But what Hulk bus do I buy? The Kirby. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but what's what's funny about all these Hulk busts, and I'm familiar with most of the artists, and but I look at it and I go, you've caught them all. I mean, from Ramita to Ross, uh, Magnola, Bruce Tim, uh, Burns, you know, uh, McFarland's. McFarland's Hulk was bizarre. Art Adams. I mean, they're oh, just yeah. also, you know, it, it, it's a nice collection if you're a Hulk fan, you know. And yeah. um well, you know what? And here's the other thing about those busts that I really, really like is um is I get sometimes guys who um hit me up who um want a bust and they've got like a painter or something like that. And those in the conversation, they'll say something to me, sort of like, um, uh, I'll say something like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's fun to paint up. Like, I'm trying to paint it up. And they'll say, like, oh, I don't paint or anything like that. And I always push those guys. And I always say, man, these busts are the perfect thing to, like, start painting on. Because they're very simple. They're really simple. Um, there's nothing to them. I said, every painter that you know that you've hired has started somewhere. You know, they, nobody, you know, started off being amazing. And I say, you really, and I always encourage guys who get these um to really like give it a shot themselves and i say it's so easy to strip if you don't like the paint and the whole thing about the hobby is that you know it to me it's supposed to be fun you're not supposed to be perfect there are guys who enter contests and like you know who are have spent their whole lives becoming like amazing at it and that's great but everybody should give it a shot like everybody should just you know if you're kind of into it Grab some paint. Just start playing with it. Like, you know, like, again, have fun. You know, that's great it's advice. Like... That's great advice. Jason, ask him the million dollars. I, I was going to, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. You ready? So Scott and I have been a, in a knockdown drag out fight for, I, I don't even know how long, but I already <laughs> know his answer because I've seen one of his painted hulks. Okay. And he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love where this is going already. Um, so if one of these people you were advising to just pick up a Hulk bus and paint it, and they said to you, what color should I paint the gums? What would you ah. say? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, the fact hey, don't you be got... afraid of him. He can't. Okay. I'm running the show. Okay. 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 So this is what I'll say. This is what I'll say. I will say that, again, it all depends on what you're going for, because here's the thing. If you want to go for realism, then you've got to go green. You've got to go green. But if you want it to look better and look cooler, you've got to go pink. So, like, I think the look of it, <laughs> it's just, it's a nice, it's a, it's a good contrast for that. Now, again, does it make sense that it's pink? No, it doesn't make sense that it's pink. No, of course it would be green. Of course. It's a hundred percent of me. But, <laughs> but I don't like, I don't like like all green. Like I like, especially around his face. When you get his face, I like seeing like the pink gum. So again, does not make sense. I get again, it. I get it. It's right, <laughs> but it's right, Troy. That's the thing. It's right. <laughs> I think you're both right. Oh, I think you're both right. No, bullshit. He's wrong. Hold on. Let's you're see what's on this one cover photo. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight, 16 hulks in one photo. And you're going to tell the man he's wrong about pink gum. Okay. No, he said it's right. He said, I agree. I agree. It does but, look but, better. Like, hey. like it sets off the mouth better. It does. Yeah, yeah. But hey, listen, they should I be green. <laughs> again, I didn't make the Hulk. So like, yeah. So out of all the, do you have a favorite when uh, your favorite Hulk? Like if you no, no, I, I really don't. I really don't. It, it really is. It's one of those things where it's like, you just, I, I don't know. It's like you, um, you always try to do better on the next project. You always like hate your old stuff. And, you know, you, you see how much, you know, if you keep moving along, you're just, 
Um, you know, I've got ones that that I like. Uh, you know, that I've got ones that I prefer over other ones. There are some that like, you know, I was kind of like, eh, I really didn't like the way that one came out so much. Um, I, I would say that like the um, the Busima one that um, that Scott brought up, that first one of him punching through the wall is still like one of my favorite ones because because I really did feel like with that one, I got the Busima that like I grew up on. And um, and that was Sal Busima, uh, not right. John. That was Sal, right. Yeah, yeah. And um, and Sal is pretty much the one. Like Sal was the Hulk king. Like he's the one I grew up on. Was Sal Busima. And um, so with that one, like I really liked that one a lot, just because it really kind of it captured what I wanted to capture for that Hulk. It was you know, um, you know, and um, you know, like I said, I've done I've done so <laughs> many of them. Um, uh, I did a. Um, I did a big one to one scale, like like life size um Hulk bust uh for uh a client not too long ago. That's the one that a picture of you holding it with yeah, the, the green yeah. one. I was just yeah. Yeah. yeah, where it's like yeah, and um and that one and um that's like a super limited release. I don't even know when it's coming out or anything, like um uh <clears throat> and um you know, the client was great, super patient because that one took me all that happened. Like it happened during COVID and stuff like that. And so it was, that one was supposed to be like, what, um, what Hulk is that supposed to be? It's it's not a particular style. Okay, so this, and I didn't think so. Cause I'm going to, and this is, I've heard this happen before. Yeah. I see this in it and I, I'm not knocking it cause it's beautiful. A lot of people say when a sculptor sculpts, sometimes he sculpts his own face into it. Okay, <laughs> you're laughing. I see you in this hole. Okay, Who knows? I, especially some of them younger pictures of you before the beard and stuff. I see you in that Hulk, and it's not a knock. It's beautiful. That's funny. That's I funny. Do see it, you in that I, Hulk. I, I, that's funny. If it's there, it, it it was completely unintentional, but I don't mind. I don't <laughs> oh mind. no, I think a lot of guys do it, but I mean, it, it's yeah. it's uh, it's like kind of. You know, I could I could see Troy <laughs> about 3 a.m. at Wonderfest walking through the lobby. <laughs> hey, Troy, give us a Hulk impression. <laughs> there and there and me, you know. You're the first you're the first one to say it, but I like I I I will not like deny that it's probably there. I don't know. So and maybe it's just me, but I mean I, I'm looking at it, it's like that's Troy, you know. And <laughs> I think I you had that at Wonderfest a couple of years ago, didn't you? Did you have that a couple of years no, ago? Just, no. Didn't, that one, okay. that thing is so massive. It's it's huge. so the so I ended up oh my god! I so I had to make um I had to make a mold and a cast of it, and that thing is so big. I've never made a mold and a cast of that like something that size before. And um, what did you sculpt so, it? Uh, monster clay. Monster. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's like um, and so. Just the um, so I had to do like a brush on mold, and then I did like the um, the mother mold on a plasty paste and stuff like that. And um, it was it was so I can't even I I don't I don't remember weighing it, but it's so ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I was gonna ask, and, is it solid or did you were you able to spin it somehow? Or oh, no, no, I, dude, I had to hand spin it because I don't have a I don't have like a well, here's the thing so like. Just on the other side of this camera, over on my table, I've got that Hulk still in Moscow. I haven't taken him apart yet because I, I don't know. I just haven't. Um, and then I've got the mother mold in about a dozen pieces because putting the mother mold on, I had to do a little section and then let it dry, do another little section and like let it dry. Like just I had to do all these pieces. It's literally like a puzzle. And then the uh, brush on mold underneath is this massive like it took me like two weeks just to do the brush on mold just to like put one layer on let it dry put another and so um when i finally did it i had to like I, i'm literally holding this <laughs> and i'm like trying to spin it like this and i'm trying to turn it around and i'm not joking it was cutting me up it was like cutting up my like my my hands and my forearms because it, it was just the the mother mold was rough and and I prayed that, like, well, after I 
after I cast it, um, I, um, I filled it with like uh, expanding foam. And, um, and every time it was so big, I would dump in so much and, and I would get the foam that like expanded like 10 times its volume. <clears throat> every time I poured it in, it wouldn't be enough. I'd be like, Oh my God. And I'd pour in more and it still wouldn't be enough. I'm like, how big is this? <laughs> and then the expanding foam I was working with, like, um, was so rigid that I don't know if you've ever used it before, but if you pour in too much, um, it'll continue expanding and it'll crack whatever the out outer wall is. And so um, once it starts hardening, it'll harden to a certain level, but then it'll keep going even a little bit further. So like it's, it's already hit the walls and then over the next hour or two, it'll just slowly, you'll be sitting in your office and you'll just hear crack, crack, oh. crack, crack. And I'm like, Oh, and it was filling me with so much stress. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's busting through the walls. And um, and I just prayed. I've never been so stressed out unmolding <laughs> before. And I finally unmolded it. And and it was mostly fine. Like it had parts I had to repair, but overall, like it uh it came out and I was just oh it was the last giant piece like that I'll ever do. Like yeah, I, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so stressful. That's funny. So let's go through some of the pictures we have. You want to do, we have this kid Wolverine and Cyclops. Yeah. What's that from? Um, again, love of um, Art Adams was like one of my favorite artists. And um, Art Adams just, he did like the kid X-Men. It's all, all those, all those pieces are like um, love of like things that like um, I was really into. And gosh, I'm trying to think, wait, that one actually that one might have been commissioned it might have been commissioned by rj martinez um again going back it's like hard to remember but but um but i just remember that i loved that version of like i love kid versions of like uh the superheroes and um and yeah that one that was done in wax that was like uh yeah we have Kid Wolvie as well, jumping off a rock. Is that another yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. What do you do you like right. sculpting in wax or what what's your preferred thing right now? What are you using? Digital. Did all digital now? <laughs> uh, dude, I I'm totally like okay, so here's the thing. So I I don't know when, if ever, I'll totally like everybody always tells me like, don't give up like the traditional stuff. Don't give up like clay and things like that. And I <clears throat> I don't want to. It's like I still obviously I like getting my hands in something, but um digital is like just so much easier. It's so much less stressful. And people who say it's like I don't know, there's the whole debate. Like it's a whole that's a whole nother podcast. Well, I, I know it. we've had it here. Yeah. yeah, again, it's the whole my view is in a nutshell is I do view it as I think it's a tool like anything else. I think it's a different tool. Um, when people say you've got two different mindsets, one side says um, it's just as hard as traditional sculpting. I don't agree with that. I think that there are things that I could do in digital that I would, that I could do traditionally. It would literally take me five times as long. You know, like something that I could do digitally, like within an hour would take me like a week to do it, like, you know, traditional. So I think you could do the same thing either way. I think it's a time difference. Um, on the other side of it, though, dude, it's taken me so long. It's not easy. Anybody who thinks that like you jump onto digital and you press a button is like, like, you know, like, well, now with AI, now you're getting to that point where you're, you're oh, yeah. starting to be able you're starting to be able to do that, but with your regular programs like ZBrush and stuff like that, um, it's it ain't easy. It's it takes a lot of work, and having like an understanding of like anatomy and stuff like that still is a huge advantage. Um, you know, so there's tons of shortcuts in digital, tons and tons and tons of shortcuts, which I love. The fact that I can work with a client, like if I was doing something with one of you guys right now. We could just send the file back and forth and I can do it like as we're talking, I can make changes. Um, the example I always give is 
if I was working on, like, say, a big Hulk, and he was really, really big, if you wanted me to shift his leg, you know, hey, can you make his leg go back a little bit further? <laughs> that's five days of work traditionally, and that's five minutes yeah. digital. I mean, that's the biggest advantage. And it doesn't cost you money. <laughs> like, you're not having yeah. to re re-sculpt stuff. Yeah. Dude, it's such a like when somebody and I and I've dealt with that my entire like the whole time I've been doing this is that I've had big projects where somebody's like, hey, can you just move his arm back? And that's what they think. They think it's just a just a shifting back of his arm. Right. And I'm like, man, that's a lot of work. Like, you don't understand the armature that's on the inside of it, like especially the bigger you get, the bigger you get, you have to build a really strong armature to hold up everything. And so shifting something is not easy, you know, and um, there, there's, there's a Volkswagen a bug under that Hulk uh, bus, isn't there? There's what? Armature. There's a Volkswagen bug under that Hulk, Hulk bus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your wedding cake topper thing reminded me of something that's on that some of my students are using at school and it's for D&D kids. It's called Hero Forge. Oh yeah, and, I know. So yeah. you know what I'm talking about? So it's yeah. like you can just build your character using their digital files and then it spits out an STL for you. And like it's almost like something you could have done like with your wedding cake toppers is have all those parts sculpted and then just yep. have people have it spit out files to them. That's I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. My um my, my son and my daughter like uh jumped on that like a little while ago. Like they were like they were kind of playing around with it and they made like a whole slew of characters and yeah. I was yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. But, very, I'm going to talk about we go up to um because you skipped two um because this is one of the last things I bought from Troy also is that Wolfman bust oh yeah oh thanks now I have every classic monster in the world okay like I needed another Wolfman like I needed a fucking hole in the head <laughs> and I saw this thing and the hair detail and stuff in it and it was just like oh, gotta have that and unfortunately the Guinness didn't come with it. <laughs> um but uh that's the picture but uh you know you were going to do more in that series troy and uh, i haven't seen more i mean i'm just saying dude listen this is my listen this is my biggest problem like everybody else scott you know how it goes it's okay for guys who buy kits like you your biggest problem is you can't stop buying kits and you'll you can't get to all of them like you just yeah. you keep buying oh, yeah. and you're yeah, and you just build up your collection of kits, and you're just like, oh, you're like, I got it. And you get all these ideas of how you're going to paint it, like what you're going to do, and you just keep building. For sculptors, the biggest problem is um, not only the list of things that you want to do. Like I, my to-do list, literally, that I've been building, I've got a to-do list that's probably 15, 20 years old that has, like, <laughs> ideas for, like, for the past 15, 20 years. Um, it's... It, a quick little tangent. It's always funny to me, like when somebody comes to me with a project, or 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 they they want um, they want to do a commission, and they're like um, they're like, oh, I've got so many ideas, and I'm like, dude, I, I do not have a lack of ideas. Like that is not like everybody's got like lots of ideas. But anyway, um, my whole thing is that I'm guilty of is I like starting lines of stuff. Um, and then, and then I always have other things that I like want to add to that line. So like, like you're talking about like with that Wolfman, I do want to continue that, but like, so the Hulk bust line is continuing. I started the ABC monsters. That was like the little busts of like ABC and it's got okay. like a little yeah. the monsters on it that I got to continue. I've got a Pulp Fiction line that I started. I've got, um, the, the ornaments. Uh, let's not forget the ornaments. I've got the ornaments. I've got the little comic busts with the little comic books around the bases. Yeah, I've got um, pictures of those in there, Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got like, dude, I start like, and um, I had a, my whole original line called The Conspiracy of like, um, almost like James Bond villains that I started. That was like a little pyramid that had like weird little guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, I always come up with ideas for like, oh, this would be a cool line. And I've been really fortunate that like most of the time they've been super well received and they've been really successful, but it's like, it's like continuing that line. I'm telling you every week I get somebody hitting me up, like asking me to continue one of the old lines that I like 
um, started. Like the ABC monsters, I get that all the time. Like a lot of people are like, you know. See, I've been around long enough to know. Yeah, they get to it in their own time if they ever get to it. You know, like, um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, if he's gonna, he'll do it. If he does, if he does it, he doesn't. The ornaments, you're still doing those, I think, right? A couple a year at least, or no? Or, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. They've been, um, you know, I they've they've always sold decent, and they're getting like the sales are becoming less and less, and. I have a my own suspicion is a couple things. One, I, I think I think the quality of those has pretty much remained the same. I think I, I'm pretty much the same sculptor when I started as I am now. So I don't think it's the quality of them. I know that like I've kind of hit a lot of the big. Um, Oh, that's funny. Why did it do the balloons? I don't know. Did you hit something <laughs> on your screen or something? No, I didn't. I don't know. Or, or did I like my <laughs> or something like that yeah, I don't know. yeah that was funny um uh so i think that i'm getting more into i've done more um i don't want to say obscure characters because like vulture's not obscure and stuff like that but i do feel like now um there's i'm trying to think of how to put it now with digital and so many people putting out like free stuff and stuff like that You've got a lot more, like, like even business wise, um, I don't get nearly as many commission requests as I used to. And I think a large part of that is because it used to be a lot harder if you wanted something done. If you wanted a character, you wanted it sculpted. It was a lot harder to find a sculptor that you could get on their schedule and you could do their thing. But now it's so easy. There's so many guys and there's so many like free platforms where you could just download free digital files. And now that everybody is starting to get digital printers and stuff, um, like that's what I'm seeing like a lot more people do it is they're just, they've got, it's almost like you've got as many kits, as long as you can just buy resin for your printer, you've got as many kits at your disposal as oh, you yeah. could possibly want. And they're, they're more affordable, they're cheaper. And um, so I feel like the ornaments are just not as unique as they used to be. Would you say it's saturated too, though? I mean, you've done a yeah. lot of characters. Yeah. Like, okay, how many Troy McDevitt ornaments can I have on my tree at one time, you know? You could do a yeah. whole tree. That'd be cool. And and I like <laughs> that you said the obscure characters because the one year you had the contest, I won. Now, how the fuck I guessed this character was beyond <laughs> me, but on the thing there, Troy gave colors, Jason, of of each ornament. And there were clues or whatever, right? And you'd start to put them up there, and you'd say, "You got." I forgot what it was, Troy. You say, "Well, you got three out of the four or something," yeah. and you have to go back. And I'm like, I'm going through my memory banks and and looking online, and I'm like, well, "Who the fuck is left that's got this color?" <laughs> and I come across the Impossible Man, who is like this, just the most. And I said, "Fuck it, I'm guessing it." <laughs> and he's like, "Bingo, winner!" And I'm like, "What?" impossible well, what man did, what, what, I, what i did jason is i put up like i put up squares i put up squares next to each other so it was like so it was like a purple yeah. square next to a, a green square and like you know in comics like purple and green is so like it's the hulk it's green goblin it's like a ton of different characters and like yeah and i had like i had like four different like rows and and like blocks in each row and like yeah so. <laughs> just proves scott's a giant nerd that's what all it right <laughs> it, it just proved that all right so i'm scrolling but, down here a little more but, but just but going back to like what you're saying though like with the ornaments the funny thing though is about those is like who knows you never know what's going to sell really well and not well but like the hulk line the fact that like those busts um dude every time i put those out like you wouldn't believe how many just sold after i just put up those new three um, but like, but like I put up the new two Christmas ornaments and those barely sold at all. So it could be any number of things. It could be people just don't like the characters as much, you know, they don't have as much, you know, connection. They kind of along you know, with what you've been saying. The model club TV. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like yeah. what you said with the saturation. I know of like three of the, three of the patrons I'm on, they did ornaments like as part of their Christmas, like. They took some of their minis and their figures and made them into ornaments. So I think yeah. a lot of people probably are kind of doing it. Maybe I I, no, I agree. That's what I'm saying. Is that yeah. is 
think that like that particular type of thing. So as far as the ornaments go, I don't know. I don't know how long I'm going to keep doing those because every year the sales of those has seemed to have gone down while like the Hulk bust, it's almost like it never slows down. Like every time I put out like a new series of Hulk bust. So who knows, you know, who knows? You just, it's what I tell my kids all the time. My daughter does art too. And um, she, she just did a con like by herself. It was her first one that she did on her own. I bought yeah. some of her Princess Mononoke spe- Forest Spirits at Wonderfest. Oh, <laughs> oh, nice. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank oh, you. yeah. I love that movie. I love those things. Every yeah. every dollar means a ton to her. But um, <laughs> she, did, she just did like a pin campaign on Kickstarter and um, and just destroyed. Like um, it was her first uh, enamel pin campaign. I collect and- pins too. So I like, oh, I want to see what this is. What is she? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll send it. So it's, it was on Kickstarter. It was. Um, it was uh, three little uh, dinosaurs, and they were Halloween themed. Oh, cool! And and so and her goal was like five hundred dollars, and she made almost three thousand. I mean, so she killed it, like absolutely that's killed awesome. it. And which, which again, you never know, but you never know how it's going to go. And that's and she's always known that. But she sets up at like cons now. I got her started like early on, and um, I think our first con was at a high school. And um, she had, you know, some prints she did, and I helped her set up her table, and it was just this little thing. And now, dude, she's got a wide table, and that's that's, awesome. that's literally how she makes her money now. So that's so yeah. cool. Cool. All right. Two years ago at Wonderfest, you had this uh, gigantic fucking Dark Knight statue with Robin from the Dark Knight Returns. What happened to that? Did that ever get produced or bought by anybody? Or Dude, it's okay. That one, it's still here. It's sitting over here right next to me. Um, that one, it's it, we're, I'm waiting to hear back from the client. It's one of those things where I haven't heard back from the client like for months and months. So he's gone dark. So it's, I've got a list of, it was a very limited thing. We were only doing 25 of them. And, um, and I've got a list of people who are ready to like put down their deposits for it, but I don't want to do it until he says go and he's gone dark. So that thing is still, um, that sucks because that, yeah. this is the first time I saw it and that's gorgeous. This oh, thank you. Oh, that was a wonder fest. I think two years ago he had it. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think, yeah. yeah um, I was probably stuck behind the table when you got to wander around the room looking at stuff, you know? No, because you wouldn't leave the table. That's why you had many opportunities, and you said, "They said, they said, listen, I'm with you, dude. I never get to walk around. Never, never. I didn't like, see shit. <laughs> it's literally, it's literally like Sunday at like four o'clock when yep. I start walking around. Yep. and like, yeah, yeah. All right, the next piece is a uh, very toothy Godzilla piece. I forgot. Was that a Patreon piece or was that just- no, I, no? That was just the. That was just a little like for fun, like just yeah, toothy Godzilla. That's all it is. Toothy Godzilla, I like that. And then yeah. the other one, uh, the jewels on the burger with the bite out of it. That's one of the. That's one of the um the, uh, the pulp fiction, fiction pieces. pieces. Yeah, and so that's I got great. Do you still sell got, that? Do you still sell I, that? I gotta get. One. I got that, and I got uh Vincent that I'm finishing up now. So I'm gonna do Vincent and um, Mia, and it'll be a a threesome. Oh, so, okay. The Samuel Jackson, I just, I loved it. Oh, thanks. Uh, but I, I've got to do Vincent. I got to, like, I had to do the two oh, yeah. of them. So, all right. Well, so, while, I, while Scott just brought it up, let's talk about your Patreon for a second. Let's people, I'll have all the links for all this stuff down below. So, if people want to join, support you. It'll all be there. How's well, that going? Well, Are you enjoying Patreon? How does it work? What do you do on yours? You know what? It's, Get, yeah. So, Patreon has been one of those things where, for like a long, when I first started, I was uploading like weekly and um had a lot of stuff so i built up like a big like following and it was really good and i was putting up tutorials and i literally had like every i had monday through friday like a weekly thing like something going on each day and dude it's so much work like trying to do like that i was just like so after i don't know several months almost a year something like that like i was just getting burned out and then again it was close to covid when um like everybody, we just had a lot of stuff happen at COVID. And there was a lot of things just family wise and just, and I dropped out like completely. So I just disappeared. So I've just now been kind of making my way back on to Patreon and figuring out how I can do it sustainably and um, make it to where I could keep things going. And so 
<clears throat> the problem is, is that it's it's so easy to overextend yourself. And when I've got I've got so many projects and I'm trying to do that, but um, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can like just make like at least like a weekly update. And I'm trying to figure out like um, as far as the digital stuff goes, like um, I want to do free STLs to kind of like encourage people to come. And so since September, I've been working really hard on digital and trying to get it to where it's my style. It doesn't look like super cookie cutter and like, you know, like uh, obviously that's one of the biggest problems with digital is like, you don't want it to look digital. You want it to be something just like everything else. You want it to look unique and cool. And like, you know, you want to be able to recognize the artist, even if they do it digitally. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And um, so, yeah, so that's, it's, it's a work in progress. It's, you know, I haven't stopped. It's, it took a big break, but I'm starting to get back into it and um, yeah. And starting to post stuff back up there. So I'm hoping to get, you know, more tutorials going, more videos and things like that. So very cool. Very cool. All right. Mad Monster Party Dracula. You did that for Norbert, I think. Yeah. 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 Uh, that was fun. That was a fun one. Man, I was hoping to see more of those because that that was really a, a fun kid. He was gonna he was gonna do it and um and he probably just got on to other things too. I know he had a lot going on. So mm -hmm. yeah, he initially wanted to continue the line, but I, I don't know what his sales were on that. I don't know, like, you know, but again, like he obviously went through a, a lot of stuff too. So, all right. Now I'm looking at this Green Goblin. And I remember you were selling a casting of this. I, man, I almost pulled the trigger on it, but it was really expensive. Um, where he's on the glider. And yeah. Getting, uh, oh, yeah. Now, that was done. And correct me, maybe I'm wrong. I know there's a group of guys out there that love the superhero stuff. And it's high end stuff. I mean, they have a cast. It costs a lot of money. Have you done a yep. lot of work for those guys, or was this? Do I? No. Yeah. I'm, you, no, I'm not. Good, I'm not good enough to do for those guys. Like, for those guys, I know they're like insane. But this no, Green no. Goblin was awesome. <laughs> well, no, um, I, I appreciate. It. But like, even like even that Green Goblin, honestly, like when I look at that, like the the things that guys are doing now is that's so um that's so my green goblin is so simplistic by comparison like you know and it's almost like i, I almost like i come from i guess the school of tony cipriano you know and which that's is, the school i'm on okay yeah, make yeah. it look like the comics okay no, and 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 i don't i i always view it as like i'm very much like tony that for me it's more important to get like um it, it's more to get like the feel and the energy of it but again even these guys though but there's guys now who do it like who just do it so much better than me period they're able to do all the detail and stuff but they're still able to get like that like energy and stuff like that so i i'm not knocking anybody i'm just saying like i'm i know where i'm at and a lot of people will like come to me and they'll be like, no, you're like, you're really good and stuff. And I'm like, listen, I'm like, I appreciate it. It's very nice of you to say, but you have to see the level of guys that are doing stuff now. And it's crazy you know, they're just, they're so good now. So it is, but it's almost to me. And again, as a comic guy, it's almost overdone. Okay. And, and like, this is where I agree with Tony. When I see Superman, I don't need to see the seams. I don't need the fancy texture. Okay, I don't need the fucking S sticking out of his chest a quarter of an inch. That's my like number one pet peeve, Troy. Okay, and this is what I loved about the bow and shit, which is why I have almost all the busts and like fifty statues. That stuff came out and it looked like the comics. It looked yeah. like the stuff in the comics. And I and you've sculpted so many things, you know, to for clients and stuff that. Uh, did the same thing. And to me, this Green Goblin did the same thing. I and appreciate, I appreciate you it. Did, you did stylize for your own style. And I'll go on to the next slide then, Jason. Well, hold on, because I um, you're skipping over what I wanted to say. Oh. So I think what you were trying to say, and I don't want to... If I'm putting words in your mouth, tell me. Less is more, in, in, in a way. There's guys that, like, just because you can do something digitally doesn't mean you have to. Whereas, mm -hmm. like, I've seen Green Goblin kits like this that are available digitally that you have him like on a giant trail of smoke, Spider-Man swinging out on a web that's attached to a pumpkin that's swinging back. 
and you have all this other stuff instead of where you could just have what you have here is the goblin on some smoke throwing his pumpkin, making it look like you have that real simple elegance to that one piece. And you don't need all of that other stuff. But, but, but it's what I, it's what I said before. It's the, it's the universal truth about this. It's all subjective. It's yeah. like, because, because just like Scott just said, like, I don't need to see the seams and everything like that. There, you go on to any other forum and there's guys who like close in on that. And they're like, look at the seams on this. Like, that's what they <laughs> yeah. look like. You know, it's I like, like the scenes. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying like, you know, everybody is into their, everybody's yeah. into their own thing. It's like, so it's, it's one of those things of like, all you can say is you can't say, in my opinion, this is better than this. All you can say is I like this better than this. Like that's, that's the <laughs> oh, most. Yeah. 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 yeah but, absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. I look at a lot of that stuff that's on there. And a lot of it, they like to do like the movies and shit now too, um, and like Wicked. I don't know if you're familiar with some of these yeah. companies that Wicked and Berserk and all that. And what they're doing is beautiful. Okay, yeah. they're beautifully done. But I only like a handful of it because it's not. It's not the style I like. Like you just said, it's not the style I like. Um, I'll go on to your uh, your magazine series um, or comic series where there's a stack of comics. And yeah, the characters. Now, a lot of those seem like they were kind of your takes on them. Okay. Oh, oh, um, no, they totally were. None, yeah. none, none of them were based on like anybody's like style. Right. And, um, and I thought that was cool. You know, I, I thought that was cool. There were some. I love I that goblin. He's so evil looking. I love it. I do have the goblin. Goblin's the one. He looks I do like have. Blix from Legend a little bit. Has that kind of. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And, um, the Goblin was good. Superman, I liked. Thank you for etching the S in and not fucking raising it. Did you raise it a little bit? I don't know. Let me say, hold on. Let me go back. <laughs> the okay next to one, raise it a little bit. Scott, it's the not next okay one, to fucking raise it. The next one I'm going to do, Scott, is going to be like, it's going to be like four inches out from his chest. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to fucking stick it into your chest at Wonderfest <laughs> if it is. Jesus Christ. Stop it already. But no, and that was a, that was a fun line, you know. Um, and I like the idea. They all had the same base. And then you did the Yeah. Set yourself a pattern up for the covers. And uh, you know, it, it was um it, it's a great line. Two more, two more I'm gonna talk about, and then and then we'll talk about Well, real more. quick on that line, all I'll say is this. All I'll say is this real quick, is that that was another one almost like the Hulks where I didn't want to go on anybody's style because I just wanted to have fun with it. It was strictly that's another one of those just for the love of the game projects that I just, I didn't, I knew all of those characters well enough that I didn't look at any reference. I just basically wanted to sit there and sculpt and just have fun. And those were also a line, those and the Hulk bus and the ornaments um, were the ones that I always pushed new people to try practicing, like start your painting with these. These are, all easy they're all not meant to be anything super complicated you're and and i wanted to keep on all of those things especially that line of bus i think i was selling them for 35 dollars each i wanted to keep the cost really down because i wanted to be something where if you messed up on it painting you didn't feel like you lost a lot of money and and i would always and i would always a lot of those for a while i included like a little sheet a uh, little piece of paper that just said, um, these are the paints you could buy, which are like cheap craft paints from like, you know, Michaels or something like that. Um, here's the stuff that you could strip it with, you know, that you could just strip it down, throw it in, and you could take all the paint off and then just keep practicing. And and I loved those. And I got more people who bought those who had never painted before um, just to jump in and try. And I was like, that's what they're, they're meant to be fun for guys who guys who are really really good are going to be getting things generally that are more complicated than this they're going to be getting things that are more challenging these aren't really challenging they're just meant to be fun you know they're and one day paint jobs or they're they're four hour paint jobs while you're sitting there watching a baseball or, game exactly. or a football game. they could be four hour paint jobs or they could be two week paint jobs that's what's cool about them is you yeah. could like a miniature guy could take one of these and turn it into like the biggest OSL like lighting effect, crazy stuff. And it's simple. It, I, I think you do really well at like a miniatures convention with these things because <laughs> they are just gorgeous. Yeah. I love that Rhino. I love that Rhino. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
So the next ones uh, I have the picture of here. And I don't know if I have all three of these. I know I have two of them. Uh, the mini statues, the Doctor Doom, Black Panther, and uh, the Hulk. And I bought the Doctor Doom from you, and I think I mail-ordered the Black Panther because you were out of it at Wonderfest. But they're so cool. And like you say, it's like kids in the outfits. Yeah. But, but Well, Scott, for you, for you, what's your what's your general what do you say is like your favorite genre of kit to buy in general? You know? What what do you lean towards? What do you lean towards? Yeah, I want to well, hear this. <laughs> it, I lean towards a lot of things. And that and that's the problem. Obviously, that's why there's seven hundred kits in the basement. Yeah. Okay. Classic monsters, of course. And when I say classic monsters, universal. I'm not a big B movie guy. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't own an alien or a predator mod. Okay. It's and it's not that I hate them. I just don't. Yeah. You know. Um. But I'm picky. It's got to be what I call in my head good. Okay. <laughs> not to say there's not good stuff out there. I don't have, but. It's got to strike me. Like, a lot of people come to me with King Kong stuff. And they oh, look, King Kong, King Kong. And I'm like, no, it's not King Kong. Okay. Yeah. I'm fussy about King Kong. Um, and the next genre, I would say, is superhero. I, I do like superhero stuff. I got into the Bowen. I started with the Bowen bus. The first one I got was the man thing, which was like number the third or fourth one he did. And I think the ninth one he did was Iron Fist. But I thought Iron Fist was just really well done. It looked yeah. like so. I got Iron Fist, and I started to get a few more. Now you know he's about fifteen in, and I've got about eight of them. And I'm like, well, fuck it, I might as well start buying them all. So yeah. I went back and got them all, and then it just turned into a monster. And I've got busts of things that I don't even know what they are: Iron Spider and shit like that. And it's like, what, right. what the hell is that? But I loved that Boa did obscure characters. And I love that he did. Uh, and he didn't always hit it out of the park, but for the most part. For the most, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, because one of the biggest kicks that I've ever gotten in the whole time I've been doing this is when I first started going to Wonderfest, um, it, there's, there really was not a lot of superhero stuff. It's mostly monsters and it's mostly like general movie stuff, like say Escape from New York and like yes. things like that. Like, yeah. you know, so like Clint Eastwood, it might be stuff like that. But it was mostly that. And there wasn't a lot of superheroes. So when I first started going and setting up, I was one of the few tables that was like almost almost exclusively like superhero stuff. And I would get guys who had only collected like monster stuff. And they would pick mm -hmm. up one or two of my little, whatever the superhero thing. And that was always one of the biggest kicks for me is that I know that like, a lot of modelers in particular have like a thing that they're into. They like, like they really like love universe. It's not that you won't go into other things, but they really love like universal or they really love like just, yeah. you know, B movie or, or they're all Godzilla or they're all like, you know, something like that. And so flipping somebody or getting somebody to kind of like, buy like a, a, a traditional superhero thing, whatever it was, whether it was one of the little, comic stack bus or little hulk or an ornament or you know whatever was always like a big kick for me because they would tell me they would say you know i don't have any superhero kits and i would say oh that's awesome i would say that's really cool and, and you're right it was a very untapped thing for a long time until yeah. of course the movies came out and they said oh we can make money doing this yeah. but it's it was bowen dude i remember bowen being a wonder fest selling his first daredevil his first thor and his first Doctor Doom statue, he didn't want to go home with him. Was selling them for a hundred dollars a piece, okay, a hundred dollars a piece. And I should have bought another Doctor Doom, but I didn't. And I still look at Bowen's Doctor Doom, the one where he's standing on the castle with his arms folded. It's perfect, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. It's perfect. Totally agree. Totally. And, you know, and you see all these really nice, you know, fancy armor and all that. And again, they're beautiful. That that's not for me. What I like is is that. And then the last thing, and super deformed, you know, so like when you see something like these mini statues, to me, that's what that is. is a, it's a super deformed, yeah. basically. And it's like, yeah, I love that shit. I, I, Mike Parks, who has, you know, left us, um, started me on that path. And it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so anytime I saw something 
wacky like that is that's the kind of stuff that I would gravitate to. And now the other great untapped source, thank God for 3D printing, was cartoons. Okay. The old Hanna Barbera cartoons, the old Warner Brothers cartoons. And now you go on CG Trader. It's amazing what's out yeah. there. Yeah. And there's oh, the yeah. one guy that I I probably have 80 of his STLs now. Okay. And um he, he's just he's amazing at doing this stuff. And yeah. um then don't, then we have people ripping them off and it pisses me off. But um, listen, that, that is the that is the one. There's a lot of things that like I've been working on. Like it's hard coming up with it's hard coming up with unique things that nobody else is doing, especially like you're saying now digitally, like just you can get almost anything. So trying to come up with a unique idea and then putting it up there, it's a real battle. Like I still haven't completely figured it out. Like, what do I want to put up as a free STL? Because there's a good chance that if it's something cool, somebody's just going to snag it and they're just going to sell it on there. Once they've yeah. got it, they've got the file. So I'm like, mm -hmm. so what things do I only offer as kits that I sell? And what things do I put up as free STLs to maybe build up like my, my uh, supporters at like Patreon, you know? And so it's this, you know, it's this real balance act of like, you know, yeah, figuring yeah, no, I, I think if you have a good enough Patreon crowd, you can help, they can help you police some of that too. And when they yeah, but, do see it come up and be like, Hey, this person took this and, but even the policing, I, I've I've discovered after all these years, even like with recasting and stuff like that, half the time it's just not worth it. Yeah, it's just you're better off just yeah. like my whole mindset has just been move on, just do something else. Like I'm not going to go after, I'm not going to spend the time trying to go after like you know at the most, you know you might send them and say, hey dude, you know this is my thing or something. Right. But if they if they don't take it down, what are they going to do? They're going to get harassed for a few days and then everybody moves on to something else. Like it's, you know, it's, yeah, yeah I don't I, have, I, we try to get Tony to maybe sell some STLs just to see what would happen on CG trader, because I'm thinking, of, okay, at some point, if you sell enough of them that it paid for it, yeah, then whatever happens, happens. Okay. Yeah. Like at that point you've gotten paid, but, but Tony is of, and and, I, and he God, if he watches this, he's gonna kill me. He's got a little bit of an artist mentality still in his head that he wants to control where his art goes. Okay, yeah. and yeah. and I understand that. Okay, where I'm not an artist, so I look at it and say it's a fucking job. And and if your job got if you got paid and you're done and you got what you wanted out of that, go. So I was like in early on, and I don't know if they're still doing it. Guys would do kickstarters for their STLs. Yes, and they put and, them out there. They still do. Okay, they fifty dollars, and if I get, you know, if I get fifty guys, I'll release the STLs to the guys that pledge the fifty dollars. Okay. Now I look at it and go, well, if you do that, okay, so now you got your twenty five hundred dollars for the skull. Okay, and you release it to those guys. Yeah, and I look at that and say, throw that on CG Trader for fifty bucks. You know, don't undercut the guys that supported you, but throw it on CG Trader for fifty bucks. And whatever happens, happens. But in the meantime, maybe you sell another 10 on there, you know, and pad your original and at some point wash your hands of it. And I think that's the only way to sell on CG Trader if you're going to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, or if you're going to sell STLs, that's the only way to do it. Or go buy a bunch of them, steal them, and then go on Etsy <laughs> and sell them. You know, that's the other way to do it. But yeah, it, it's so... it's. It's uh I was talking to Paul Gill the other day and he's coming. It's like the wild, wild west out there. And he's not wrong. No, it is like the wild, wild west out there. Yeah. You know? I gotta go one more, one more piece. That's yeah. one of my favorite Troy pieces here at the end. That's the Harry Osborne with the green goblin mask. Oh there. yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah. And I remember when you did that, but and it, it's it's over exaggerated the face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's a cover of Spider Man that I'm sure you modeled this after a little yeah. bit where he finds Peter Parker's mask. Look yeah. up and he's got that same expression. And when I saw that, I was like, that is so cool. And I remember the guy that was doing it because that was a commission piece for you. You weren't doing that. Yeah. And I got a hold of my, and I almost ended up molding and casting that for him. God, I wish I would have because I did end up getting one secondhand from someone. And uh, this poor guy did some casting work that I've never seen that's got like, did you ever get a casting of this thing where it's got no. like, 
flats coming out of the fingers. Like, oh. they invented it with these flats coming out of the fingers. I'm like, oh. why, why did you do that? You yeah. know, and because as a caster, I looked at it and I said, eh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's a whole, like, learning how to do it well is, like, it is an art form. Like, but, uh, yeah. So, awesome anyway. Piece. All right, Jason, go ahead. No, what, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best place to do it? Are you open to commissions? Are you just, do all your plugs so we can get people on over to where you're at. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm always open for commission. I'm always open to, like, talking to people. And I've got no, if there's something that I'm not, like it, it's not my forte or I'm not the best at like um, I have no problem saying, Hey, I'm not the guy for this. Like, you know, but if it's something that sounds pretty cool, like there's when uh, like nine times out of 10, I'll work with somebody and say, yeah, yeah, this sounds cool. Um, and so the easiest way at this point, like um, to get a hold of me is literally like through Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Like, um, you know, Facebook's probably the easiest. Um, and, um, I haven't even bothered, like, I, I kind of let my website lapse because I was trying to build that. And that was a whole thing of trying to get that going. I said, you know what? I don't even, at, at the point that I was doing that, I know I was, the same, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was so busy. I was sort of like, you know what? I don't even need like more work at this point. Like, like to get it up and running, it's just, you know, again, yeah. you know how it is. So yeah. I sort of. I go and i'm just like you know sticking with regular socials so cool mm -hmm. i will put up your facebook links and everything below instagram as well uh patreon Ooh. what's is there a certain it's just what uh, the, it's the mcdevitt studio so okay. if you go to Patreon, you just go to the mcdevitt studio okay i'll get that link up too that'd be awesome awesome and now you know we exist so when you do new stuff <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, send us anything send us an email well, yeah, or we'll send me a message even you could send a picture and a message to me not to fucking memory challenge over here send it to me and uh you know i'll, we'll plug, it I'll, you. We'll plug it for you i'll do a group chat so nobody or do, yeah or do a group chat yeah that's, yeah he's usually sleeping anyway but oh my um, god no uh, i i appreciate you coming on yeah it should, uh, yeah thank you thank you thank hey you, listen thank you, thank you. So i love your style of stuff um hey thanks so much for inviting me i was from like go i i, I gotta ask you about this calvin and Hobbes batman and a gargoyle thing one of a oh, kind yeah. What do, you, what do you mean one of a kind? I, I'd have bought that in like two seconds. Okay. It's like. <laughs> well, let me get to the picture. Wait, there it is. It's all the right. very first yeah, one I under the. I go all the way back. Um, oh my. That thing was awesome. And, and you know what? It took for today when I was pulling the pictures. I said, oh, that's cool. Calvin is Batman. And it took a minute to register that the gargoyle was hot. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, was that someone else's <laughs> idea, or did they come? Was that yeah, no, no, totally, totally. No, the, the the um the client like he came to me and he had found um a piece of artwork that somebody had drawn, and um and almost usually if I'm doing something based on somebody's artwork, I like to like give them credit. And on that one, I I don't know who the artist was. Mm -hmm. So um, so but he sent me just a, a little like uh, drawing that the artist had done and that's what he wanted based on so and it was just the upper half so all you could see was like hobbs's arms and mm -hmm. uh and that was it so it was just like hobbs arms so i had to like do the rest but i mean it wasn't hard to come up with the rest and we know what hobbs looks like so you know but uh but yeah that was a fun one. that was fun i calvin hobbs is my all-time favorite cartoon so mine too but i used yeah. to be a you and Scott. guy but <laughs> yeah um when I got turned on to Calvin Hobbes, it was life changing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's it's not exactly a hot take to say that Calvin and Hobbes is my favorite cartoon. So, <laughs> you know, it's it just you know you wonder how many people were there. From I think I started; they were in the third book, second book had just come out. Yeah, I went to the comic store and they had it, and everyone was swooning over it. And I go, "What's the big deal?" And the owner of the comic store knew me really well, and he took the first two books because the second one had just come out, put them on the counter. He put them in my stuff. He said, here, take them home and read them. If you don't like them, bring them back next week. If you like them, come back next week and pay me. But dude, I was literally laughing out loud. Oh, yeah. In like six pages in. And yeah, um, yeah. you know, and, and I like, like I said, I'm an old Peanuts fan from way back and all that, because that's what I grew up on. But man, Calvin and Hobbes was just 
it, yeah. it literally, literally life changing. Like it literally like changed the course of like a lot of the things that I did from that point on. So yeah. Awesome. I am yeah. Calvin, I think. Yeah. Maybe I'm hot. I don't know. <laughs> You're something. <laughs> what, that, what it is. You're something. All right. Hopefully we can have you on again. Yeah, um, man. This, this yeah, for sure. I, again, I really appreciate it, you guys. We appreciate it too. So awesome. thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you. We'll thank talk you. To you soon. Thank you, Troy, for joining us. That was awesome. All of Troy's links are down below. Head on over, give him some support. Buy some stuff from him. And again, thank you so much for coming on uh, in uh, such short notice. All right, Scott. Emails, voicemails, and corrections. I got good news for you. We have no emails. We have zero emails. We might have got one, and if I missed it, I'm sorry, but I don't see one. So we do have a new uh, voicemail. I think it's from the same person that might be doing Tuggy's Ghost. But, you know, it could all be real. So let's see. Here we go. Allow me to introduce myself. This is William Hanna of Hanna and Barbera. Scott, I don't recall signing a waiver putting you in charge of licensing and marketing of Hanna Barbera merchandise. Yet there you are. When you're done cutting checks, make sure you have one made out to Warner Brothers Animation. Or you can PayPal or Venmo me direct at yabadababoo at netscape.net. And yes, fuck Jason Walker and Scott Johansson, too. Okay, that was our voicemail. Uh, Scott, thoughts? What do you really want me to say? Uh, uh, I thought it was pretty funny. Well, I thought it was funny, too. I think I know who it is, and um, I'd love for him to uh, message either of us, and I'll be happy to have him on the show. <laughs> How's that sound? That's a great idea. That's a great plan. And all I'll say is we've had a sculptor on the show. Yeah. Yabba dabba boo. Yabba dabba boo. All right, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have corrections from the last episode. We got any corrections? I got nothing. I got nothing either. So that's but the I'd show, like everybody. To, uh, <laughs> I'd like to hear those that listen to this tell me who that is. So, uh, okay. Put in the comments. We have a What's in the Bin coming up next episode. We filmed it today. And then we still, I think, are going to have our live episode on March 30th. So stick with us. That's where we're at. It was a quick turnaround here because of the short month. And thank you, Troy, for joining us on short notice. That's the show, everybody. Uh, if you want to send us a voicemail, it is... Scott's dumb face at 708-816-4299, 708-816-4299. And then we also have our email address, modelclubtv at gmail.com. Remember, if you're part of the Jaeger beat, send your stuff over to Scott. And then everyone else send it over to modelclubtv at gmail.com. Uh, don't forget, if you want to enter the... Co- oh, my God. I just overlapped. I've never done that before. I didn't even know it would work. I overlapped things. Uh, if you would like to enter for the giveaway from Die Click Heart <laughs> on Patreon, we have the Nosferatu and we have the Morticia Adams. Can never have touched or built a 3D printed kit before. Uh, put 3D print for me in the comments below. First person to be, have their name drawn will get to pick. Second person gets the runner up prize. So. We'll see you all next time. Say goodbye, Scott. Hey, oh, wait. If our voicemailer would like to come on, I'm here, baby. I'm here. We'll have uh, you on. All right. That'd be great. Work it out. All right. See you next time, everybody. Say goodbye, Bye. Scott. Goodbye. Oh, that was a good goodbye. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs>